Welcome to a special Iron Builder recap episode here at Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon. And I am Matthew K. And I'd like to thank Brickmania for their support of Beyond the Brick. The World War Brick event at uh, Anaheim, California is happening February 13th through the 15th. So if you're in the Anaheim area, I'd encourage you to check out that event. If you're into military Lego builds, it should be a really awesome event for you to check out. You can find more information at brickmania.com or I'll include a link in the description of this video as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Iron Builder recap episode. So the latest uh, Iron Builder was between our, our three guests, that we actually four guests that we have joining us here. We have Sean and Steph Mayo, we have Tyler Kleitz, and we have Nan and Z. So thank you guys for joining us tonight. Thanks and, Nan, and if you just want to start off, for people who might not be familiar with Iron Builder, want to start off maybe with a little bit of the history of it or just what Iron Builder is? Yeah, sure. So Iron Builder is a competition that goes on um, lasting a whole month where two builders normally um, kind of duel against each other in terms of building creations using a mystery part that's announced at the beginning of each month. So the challenges for each builder or each side to build um, as many quality creations as they can using that one type of element. And you post them online, and then there's a lot of back and forth um, smack talk going on to kind of entertain the crowd. So it's a competition that's been going on since 2009. And over the years, it gets more and more competitive. Uh, people really step up their games, and you see a lot of great creations coming through this competition. So it's an uh, uh, exciting month for the builders and for the audience who are watching the show. Mm -hmm. And it's generally a one versus one competition, right? So it's it's. I think you've had two versus two maybe once or twice in the past, but it's usually one versus one. It's usually one versus one. The only times that we do two versus two is when Sean and Steph are defending their titles because we <laughs> can't just throw up one builder against them. So you know, ho, so we have to find two builders, and uh, this is their fourth battle, I believe. And so, in the previous um, battles, they have defeated other pairs of builders. So, um, for this round, essentially, I wanted to find a pair that has, you know, the greatest odds of, you know, having a fair battle where either side could win and. I can't really think of anyone else, so for me, I decided to go ahead and step in the battle and use that as an excuse to kind of, you know, get some building done myself as well. So that's what happened. Um, I, for this round, I chose myself and Tyler, who the community knows us for our collaborative projects, to go up against Sean and Steph, and that's how the uh, challenge started. Mm -hmm. Now, have you done it in the past, Nanan? I think you've, you've done it once or twice. This is actually my first formal Iron Builder round. Um, before I did one challenge, it was using one part, and um, it really wasn't a formal Iron Builder, it was just a build-off. Okay, I think that's what I was thinking of then. And Tyler, uh, what was the, the part for this competition here, for this month? Uh, what, what was the part, and when, when you first got it, what did you think of it? Tubes! The, uh, the ribbed tubing in uh, flat silver, or I think we had flat silver and pearl light gray or whatever, but um, I thought it was awesome. It's a lot better than, I, I was just happy that it wasn't something yellow, because yeah. the, the past two iron builders I've been in, I've had yellow parts, so um, yeah, I was glad it wasn't yellow. I, I have to say, like, uh, it seems like one of the more versatile parts that has been uh, featured thus yeah, far. Yeah, I, I, I really think so. And actually, to add to that versatility, is it a specified link that you all had to work with, or was it a variable, uh, you know, you could cut to yeah, size? Any length, any length, any and we length. were allowed to cut it, oh, which wow. I only did once. Okay. Just, just for the record. For the record. So, uh... The other purists out there. <laughs> how, about, uh, you, how about you, Nan, and what did you think when you first got the piece? Uh, it was... I was kind of happy, but also not happy at the same time. It's hard. I was expecting something that's like a rare part that I haven't seen before, and then I saw like tubes, and I was like, well, I have 
plenty of these parts. They're all over the place. Like this is such a common part. But then I thought about it for a few minutes, and I realized that there's so many applications. So I think this is actually one of the uh, most um, versatile iron builder parts because the fact that you can cut it and modify it, and the fact that it comes in different lengths. So um, I think this is the most versatile iron builder part that we have, or Guy and I have chose. This time he chose the part. So okay, so that's understandable. That's how it, the the part is always. It's usually at least in this uh, this month of Iron Builder was chosen by Guy then for what part you should mm -hmm. use. Yeah, I had no idea what he had in mind for me. So I believe he, because um, normally, so so I know guys probably were going to watch this, but I'm going to say it anyways. I normally am afraid of what Guy picks for Iron Builder parts after seeing some of his choices in the past. So I was actually a little bit relieved when I got the tubes, to be honest, because I knew um, Guy was also seeking like at least a second opinion from Bruce Lowell, who's one of the uh, former Iron Builders. So all together, I mean, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So Sean and Steph, uh, Tyler and Nana didn't seem to think the piece was too bad. What were your thoughts when you first got it? We thought the piece was great. Um, yeah. It obviously had its like immediate applications of it being a hose or a wire or a tube, but I think it really, uh, the second we got it, we're like, wow, there are definitely a lot of options that we can do with this, and yeah, it's just a really versatile part, even though there's no studs on it or anything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love the fact that it's flexible, that we can cut it. That was probably our biggest fear initially was, great, it's a tube. And we're, we cut flex tubing and ripped hosing all the time, and we were scared for a second that we were going to get it and be told we're not allowed to cut it, and we're going to have to like rip out part of our Lego <laughs> identity to try to avoid cutting it, but the fact that we were allowed to cut it was a huge relief. <laughs> yeah, and it's a nice, more neutral color, which is uh, really nice after the last yellow round. We were sick of yellow, too. <laughs> and it was unusual for us, because we're main, we're, we organize our Lego by color, mm -hmm. so we often, we take the color that the Iron Builder piece is, dump that color out, and then try to work from the color, and this was unique just because it was a base color that goes with so many other colors, we were able to figure out what we wanted to build and then what colors can like complement it as opposed to being like changed to a specific color like yellow. Yeah. Uh, like requires an alteration of the uh, the approach, right? Which after doing yellow with Tyler, we were very grateful for. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Now, I think Nan had mentioned that this is the the fourth uh, time you've been in Iron Builder, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So by now, do you guys have kind of a strategy down when you first start the month of builds? Is it uh, kind of work through what types of builds you'll do right after you get the piece, or even before you get the piece? Is there an idea of how you'll how you go about doing the builds? Um, the short answer is yes. The long answer is you have a month to think about it. So to walk through a month's worth of thinking really quick <laughs> is kind of impossible. But yeah. I think ultimately you're trying to get to stuff that you think the opponent's going to build quicker. Um, you got to be careful what you're saving for the end. Because right. several times we've tried to save a lot of builds that have had the thunder stolen in the middle of the process because the other person got to it first, even if we've been working on it from day one. So trying it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, you guys obviously are, are together there, so it's it's a little easier for you two to work together. Uh, Nanan and Tyler, how did you guys balance out uh, working from some from separate places? Was there a lot of Skype conversations, or how did that work? Actually, we didn't we didn't even Skype at all. We just kind of uh, would email back and forth. We ended up, uh, Nanan had the good idea of just setting up a, uh, uh, like a Google Doc uh, spreadsheet so that we could just catalog our ideas and... Uh, you know, be able to put in what we were working on, what we were planning on working on, what we were waiting on parts on, and things like that. That way we could kind of keep tabs on what the other person is doing without having to sit there and, you know, take time away from building to have a Skype call or something like that or whatever, you know, and you can just kind of update your own thing. And, you know, in, 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 you know there's even some passing off of, you know, ideas here and there and going, oh, I can, I can do that real quick or, you know, are you, are you going to do that? No, I, go ahead, take it. 
you know, so it was a, it was it worked worked pretty well, I think. Mm -hmm. And I imagine you kind of, like, as you were as you were thinking over ideas, did you play to the the strengths uh, that each of you guys have? Was there kind of like, oh, I like doing this type of build, so I'll try to incorporate it in in this build? It's more like what we can do um, within the time frame. So for me, I thought about like 12 to 13 ideas, and I knew that I wasn't going to have more time to build those 12 or more mocks, so I just went ahead and stuck to those. So that was my game plan. Now, Nan, you're in the middle of like med school, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to throw that out there. That's I think cool. that's definitely something to, like, that is, uh, it's not a cakewalk, I would assume. <laughs> so. Uh, so, you know, I, this month is relatively good for me. Um, I'm in my fourth year, which means that our schedules are pretty flexible. So, essentially, I had the whole month off minus 11 days in which I was out of town. But for the other, like, 16, 17 days, I was home, uh, well, minus four days or five days working. But so for 10 days, I had all day. That's pretty good. So you were able to get a little bit of flexibility in there with, with you when you were able to build? Yeah, so it was, you know, it's it's... It's a decent month. Ideally, it would have been better if I had started like a week earlier. But, you know, I couldn't really ask for much better than, you know, the current situations, even though I'm like completely out of town for 11 days doing interviews and whatnot. <laughs> Well, I think now we'll we'll dive into to some of the builds that you guys did because obviously there were a, a huge amount of builds that came out from each of you guys during this competition. So, uh, Sean and Steph, if you just want to start off with uh, a couple, maybe two or three of your uh, favorite builds that you did, and then Nan and Tyler will go to, to you guys next after they talk about theirs. What's your favorite build? Probably the dragon. Yeah, start with the dragon. dragon. Yeah, the dragon is probably one of our favorite of the rounds. Um, I think that and the Matrix build. Yeah. So there the dragon is nice because it's something that we were able to save towards the end, and we've built dragons and creatures of similar shape and size before, so that didn't burn through our time as much as something else might have. Yeah. So yeah, then the, the dragon you're talking about is the one, I believe, that had the, the actual fire shooting out of its mouth. Is that right? No, it's yeah. the little tiny one. The little tiny one's their favorite. Yeah, where's the little <laughs> tiny guy? <laughs> and actually, you know what? Funny enough, we posted this. We had a couple ideas that we had built, and we were trying to incorporate into a couple of builds, and it never happened. And this was one of those ideas that we were, wanted to build, like a little micro-scale castle and have him in a scene. We had a light bulb that lit up using the thing as the screw. And they just never quite got to the point where we wanted to actually use them. So we posted this guy anyway as sort of like a joke preview for the actual dragon. And similar to our last round with Tyler, where the green paintbrush became our most popular build, even though it was a joke for April Fool's, <laughs> This this guy has literally ten times more views than the rest of all of the stuff. <laughs> it's kind of depressing. <laughs> just the, the the smaller the build, the better, or something, or you just uh, uh, just caught on. Reason it got on Explore, and you got people who are like, "Great shot," you know. It's like <laughs> it makes you question what you're doing. What am I doing wrong with my life? You know. <laughs> Like, we built this, and this is what's important. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can plug the dragon in and see if, he, if there's any enough propane left to give him a breath or not. Okay, see, see if you can fire up the dragon here. <laughs> the computer all turned around. Do you all have Nanan's uh, fire extinguisher standing by? I wish. Um, that's good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
It looks like it's working. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> honey, the smoke detector, honey. <laughs> oh, man. You just need to put some Mega Bloks in front of it now. <laughs> so I don't know if you could hear it, but like the tubing makes this cute little whistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can, you can, you can. So the dragon like blows fire by going like this. Like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The nicest part about it, and the reason it's probably my favorite, is we've done like the flamethrower in the past against the Ericsons with the mech, but this guy will be able to actually bring to a convention. It's safe enough that we're not priming it with gasoline or anything like that. So we'll be able to just, you know, literally stick it on the table, and as long as we don't get in trouble from the powers that be, actually light it in various buildings because he's really safe. That's so, awesome. Yeah. What's the setup that you guys used, and how did you uh, get access to that kind of material or knowledge to use that? <laughs> uh, in, in college, I made a backpack flamethrower for fun. Um, <laughs> nice. I don't know. And <laughs> we've been pyros ever since. <laughs> yeah, it's just Home Depot stuff. Once you go to the dark side, you know, you just can't, uh, there's no going back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I uh, think you mentioned one kind of there with your, your small dragon, but were there any other ideas that you really thought would be cool to do but you didn't have time for? Oh, time. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I really wanted to do was a full suit of samurai armor. Uh, like not 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 full body uh, armor for samurai, but like a good three foot sort of stand with the bamboo kind of armor and the helmet and stuff. Yeah. We also built a little working light bulb uh, that didn't get used, and we were gonna do um, a suit of armor for me with the piece of like lacing up the front and back. Like a corset. Like mm-hmm. And, yeah, the biggest disappointment for us as far as what we weren't able to get to, um, we had an order that took a long time to get here. We didn't get it until okay. the last week. But um, if you guys remember the Abbey build, I'm um, pointing you at it. I'm pointing you at my cat, but <laughs> there's the castle build on the floor. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. That was... Actually, we had built um, the base plate was, or actually the entire base was stolen from a mock that was four times as big, and we'd been chipping away at since week two, and we simply weren't able to get to it. It was a six-foot table display, and it was going to have like a two-foot waterfall with cliffs and a large sort of oriental castle scene. Mm -hmm. But we just had to cut our losses and say it's is it more important to build a dragon and you know a ship and a bionic claw and we decided to just go with the multiple builds towards the end as opposed to the one big build. Sure. Well, I'm very glad that you decided not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> How much time were you putting into? Um, building on these mocks. As I'm sure not just me, but the whole community. Will have. <laughs> <laughs> Any idea? Huh? Oh, how much time were we putting into the big one? Or, or just all of them in general? Building in general throughout the whole month. I don't... I, we did not spend more than... <clears throat> two days on any one thing. So the dragon was built in a day and a half. Power drill was built in a single day. The payphone was a single day. The castle of Mach was actually built in a single day. Um, the claw was actually built in about... Well, the, the mechanical motion was built in a day, and then the rest of it was built in about... The half 20, hour before. 25 minutes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, pretty much a day for everything. Hmm. That's yeah. I have a hard time imagining like building that whole castle in a day. That's it is yeah. pretty fast, to be honest. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to get the video diary, journal entry sort of things that we've been taking throughout the process. Uh, we've collected a bunch of clips of just 
every day we tried to take a video camera and be like, so this is the seventh day of Iron Builder. Uh, we're working on this, and we hope to do this tomorrow. And I hey, is it like one of those Alaska wilderness style documents? I've been out here for seven days, and I, I, I haven't drunk any water. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, it also that cool. I think the the more accurate representation is the like the the teen gamer YouTube video sound <laughs> where you are super lame. Hey, so I'm gonna go. Down and it just sounds like. We'll have to work on the editing to try to make me sound cool because I know I. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's awesome. pretty informative as far as showing what we intended to do and what actually happened versus, you know, what we weren't able to do at all. You know, it, half the stuff we did wasn't planned and it just happened. Mm -hmm. The dragon wasn't even supposed to be a dragon. It was supposed to be a behemoth, and not even he wasn't supposed to breathe fire until the last half hour. And then he switched from breathing dry ice to breathing fire. It was just easier. It's like all kinds of random stuff like that. <laughs> kind of making it up as you go along, but that works out pretty well. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Tyler, did you have uh, any couple builds that come to mind of uh, of your favorite builds that you did throughout the, the competition? My builds I did that were my favorite? Yeah. Um... The uh, this guy is my favorite. Okay, that was one of mine as well. I uh, that was one of the first that as I was looking over the builds you did that really caught my. That's a, a very interesting build there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was one of those that like uh, I just you know one of my ideas was uh, you know epaulets and uh, I was thinking of doing some steampunk guy and stuff and as I'm looking more at epaulets and, you know, just Google imaging things and stuff. I, I'm like, you know what, I gotta do some... I, I wasn't anticipating it being some crazy character, but it turned out turned out pretty cool. And not what I expected, so I, I guess that's what delights me the most, is that it was something that I hadn't planned out to the nth degree beforehand, so... Yeah. Is there a, a hardest build for you? One that kind of, maybe even before you started it, uh, you kind of got into it and figured out this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought it would be? Um. Yeah. Probably the uh, the the big techno mecha thing, because I had I had tried. Um. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this to uh to Matthew at Brick Fair, but I had tried to build a techno mecha to bring to Brick Fair, and I had I had built a fair amount on it, and you know I I, I was kind of cutting it close to you know when I had to leave for Brick Fair, and I came back. I went somewhere, came back, and it was on the floor in like a million pieces. So I just, I just scooped all the pieces up and disposed of them. <laughs> and uh, so, th so this was, this was my attempt to resurrect it. So I, I knew it was going to be challenging. I still have a lot of things I want to change, but, but, uh, but yeah, that was probably the, the most challenging. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you got it finished. Now, is, uh, what's the, what's the design on the chest? Could you talk about that a little bit? Uh, how do you, how do you mean? Like the the just the, the I was just trying to kind of put together the architecture of the the sort of just the, the visual I don't know like like I, I couldn't really like just maybe like how did you conceptualize it I guess I, I don't maybe that's too vague I don't well I mean uh, you take, well I mean there's a there's a oh, sorry what at least the the metals were really cool too so I mean if we could see the like front bust of him again it's pretty awesome oh yeah yeah I, I don't have it with me but in the other room, but uh, it's basically just a, a Technic frame and then stuff slapped on top of it real quick. The, the, the torso actually came together really, really quick, so it's really messy, and there's no back to him at all. Oh. So it looks good in the photo, but at a convention it might be a little... Very cool. That's about half of our builds are. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what ends up in Iron Builder, especially with all the Force Perspective stuff. It's like, <laughs> this is for the photo. Behind there is red and yellow bricks. Yeah, even even this guy has like no back to him. Like his it, it's all just naked. <laughs> There's nothing there. That is awful. So I believe oh, this the, is the build you were talking about, right, Matthew? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was gonna say the, the the star on the chest. It looks like a star. I, I saw a Flickr user Nolnet posted yep. a star like that a while back. Is that a, is that? That's the same the same one I think. Oh okay. All right. I was because I saw that, like they look familiar. I couldn't figure it out, but I, that's awesome. That is really awesome. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, this yeah. this was another build that definitely caught my eye looking through your builds that you did in the competition. That's awesome. I have more s- stuff planned to do with him, so you'll probably see more more pictures once he gets uh once he gets some some a back. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look forward to there then. Yeah. Now Nanan, did you have uh, any one or two builds that came to mind for you as far as your your favorite builds? Maybe after you finished it, you thought this this turned out really well. Uh, I have a couple. I wouldn't say they were my favorites. They were kind of built specifically for this challenge, so I had to find ways to uh, use the two. But uh, I'm looking through what I made so far, so I'll pick a few to show on the camera. Um, I'll just grab whatever I have around me, so give me one sec. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there's one here. Okay, so I'll start off with this guy right here. He's, um, I like him for the fact that, um, well, it was Tyler's idea to build legs on him before. I just kind of built the head and the brain and kind of wanted to call it a day because I wanted to use the, uh, pieces as the uh, screws on the head. But Tyler was saying, well, make, like, add a uh, pair of, like, spider legs just to make him look creepy, and I did that. So I like how the joints turn out, and, you know, he's a mock that I'm planning on keeping, and then the brain I made out of the uh, mini fake arms. And another one is the uh, fire extinguisher. This one, um, I took off the label, but this one, they turn out pretty accurately compared to a real one, although it's one to one scale. Um, it does let me use the x pot lids for the top and the bottom to uh, smooth out the cylinder, and then I like the fact that the compass here is, uh, resembles the pressure gauge. And then one of my personal favorites, this one wasn't really one of the more popular ones. It's a more abstract creation that I made um, after several sittings. This is a kind of a dream creation that like backstory is like here's the next so the backstory is you know it's all like a figment of one person's imagination and the guy is here in this kind of uh, machine like apparatus that's kind of his life support and he is conjuring up this giant beast I don't think people really understood understands it uh, neither do I fully it's actually based off a concept art from uh, Magic the Gathering, one of the card games. So I like the fact that, you know, it's a monster with really um, a multitude of legs and claws on them, and then he's got this, you know, unrecognizable shape that comes with it. So overall, it's a very sturdy creation. You know, there are some details that I put a lot of time into. Like on the bottom, you can see that there's actually offsets um, for the slopes, which is a detail that you won't see unless you look underneath, and then, but it's kind of hard to capture all that in one angle. So that's the creation that I think I like um, a bit more than the others. And I'm also, let's see, and then the one I guess I would like to show, but it's not here, is the uh, ball creation, where it's just a rolling ball sculpture. You can see the video on Flickr, but originally it was intended to be a ball factory, so all the blank space on the base plates were supposed to be where buildings are going to go, and I ordered a ton of the uh, Lego basketball like court plates to make buildings, but then I ran out of time to make them. So I made that one in actually five days, so actually five nights, because during the day I was working. So... I made that one in five nights and I photographed it on the last day, which is Saturday, and uh, used my near non-existent uh, video editing skills to uh, <laughs> shoot a video, which Tyler motivated to you know add music and everything, which I've never done to a video before on my own. So you know it's a it's a good motivation. I'm pretty happy with the fact that I used a you know I found a free video editing software. I used it to uh, you know, brighten up the creation in the video and added music. I well, I never knew I could do that myself, so I'm pretty happy with the fact that this is Slow clap for the <laughs> <Woo>! yeah. <laughs> Made some yeah, technological uh, advances during the competition as well, yeah. like, in your building. Exactly. Like, 
And this the same thing with photo editing. Like I Tyler helped me with editing two of the pictures by adding backgrounds, but he gave me some pointers for future creations, such as kind of adding a gradient to the photos, which I didn't know how to do before, but it's as simple as it's like a click and drag. So stuff like that I'll be using in my photo techniques in the future. So I think that's you know some of the best things that came out of this contest in terms of my pro personal um, uh, presentation development for my creations. Sure, and, and I think uh, Tyler, this kind of code maybe goes back to some of the stuff that you've been doing, but it's like the your creations for this round they seem more like uh, less builds, but it's like the photo was the the you know the the creation in of itself, like the way it was edited together, the yeah. background, and I, I think that's like a, maybe a larger trend with Lego builders everywhere. But you've really uh, kind of you're mastering that art. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that I'm I've, uh, I've you know, gravitated like, more towards. Uh, you're still trying to talk because I can't hear you. Go ahead. No. I think his camera was just catching up. Okay. Um, but no, that's that's something I've been I've been doing more of because, you know, with Flickr, you know, yeah, some people will upload like a bunch of pictures of something, and that that's that's great because then you can see all the angles of it. But me personally, like, I like to just see one picture of it and be able to, you know, get as much as I can out of just one one picture. You know, so. Um, you know, I guess that's why I like to do some of the characters and that kind of stuff where there's like a, a little bit of a story behind it that you can capture in just, just one little image um, as opposed to having to tell a story through a bunch of bunch of different images. You know, that made, I guess in our in our, our day and age where everything has to be instant gratification, I want somebody to be able to get, get it instantly with just one picture, you know. Totally. Yeah, and I think that shows it, it turned out really well. Thanks. And now I think we'll we'll do something kind of flipping flipping that around as far as your favorites and kind of choose the favorites from the competition. So Sean and Steph, uh, if you did you have any builds that when you first saw them that either Tyler or Nanan posted, you were like, wow, that's that's a really amazing build, or just in general, was there one or two favorites from them? Yeah. So for starters, we're gonna say uh, our favorite build of Nanan's, and this is a combination of our favorite build and the one that made us. The most uh, angry. <laughs> um, look what you've done. So when we saw that he posted um, using the piece as coins, we were like, we were super disappointed because we had these builds using like Technic rods uh, to squash the hoses, and we had like a desk and everything all built. But he did such a solid job because. Mm -hmm. Often, if, if somebody builds something and uses like an idea that you had or we're working on, you can, you know, be like, "Oh, we were doing the same thing," and just, you know, make post yours, especially if it can be better. But he did it such a solid job that it was truly like one of the few times where we've just had an idea and just been like, "Okay, yeah, we're not doing it. It's done. That time is wasted." Like, because <laughs> he he used the coins, he did it really well. He built. A beautiful interior, even with like a Lego backdrop in the background through the window, and it just sort of told sort of like a great story. So I think that was our favorite build, even though it would be like ah, <laughs> I I can't take credit for all of that since it was Tyler who came up with the coins idea, and then as soon as I saw that on the uh, spreadsheet, I knew like that's something that I want to tackle. So it's pretty easy to put together like a backdrop for that. So. Tyler's one, the one with the idea, but I do like what you guys did by squishing the uh, the hoses down. It makes it look more realistic. So one of the questions that I had was like, for a lot of your, your creations, you kept the hoses like bent at an angle, like on the Matrix Sentinels. How did you do that? Did you use like a metal wire inside? For that, that one specifically was the least um, Lego pure. Like on the bunch of the other ones where they are bent and stuff, we did a lot of Tyler's method with sticking Technic bars and stuff in them, in a ton of them. But in for the trees and a lot of the squiggles jammed snakes inside. But for the uh, Matrix one, we started off stripping wires from uh, not mine storms, but the old ones with the two by two square electric plates, or black uh, two by two black plates with the wires between them and twisting those together to kind of have enough structure. And 
we decided it just wasn't worth burning through a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of those at however many dollars a piece they were. So after confirming that they worked, I'd say for um, one of the Sentinels, three of them were pure using like Lego wire. Three of the legs were pure, and then the rest were just wires, like normal wire. And then I think there were three Sentinels total in that picture, mm -hmm. and I'd say about half the legs were were done just using normal wire, and the other half were done using Lego techniques, like clipping his leg to something, or having it twisting around other Lego pieces. Mm -hmm. So that was a few of your strategies you used there had to get a little bit a little bit more creative with some of those uses. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So that was uh, some of, uh, let's see, one, one of your favorites there from Nanon. Was there anything that stood out from Tyler for you guys? Um, yeah. I definitely like the robot. Um, and also, we also like the trampoline dude. The trampoline was awesome. Yes. <laughs> that was really cute. Yeah, I like the trampoline. The perspective on the photograph was awesome too. You know, or was it like you're like looking down, sort of something? Well, <laughs> I think so. Every time we do an iron, or we've done an iron builder. It's we're kind of like sponges, and we learn so much from the competition. We're not like even if you know we had beaten uh, somebody in the rounds previously, we just notice naturally that the next round we're doing stuff as similar to like the way they did it in that round as possible, but it's kind of just a funny way it works. Like the Matrix was purely based off of Bart Dobler and his building style. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that we learn from other builders and having faced Tyler in previous rounds, uh, we just really loved how he does the characters, the how he does the expressions and the scenes with the faces. Um, our pogo stick boying guy is I mean, that was purely <laughs> Tyler uh, fired. It's just like, there's no way we would have built that with his hair, like, wow, on his face. And, uh, and we rushed to post it because we were thinking Tyler might do a little pogo stick, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah I told we had a pogo stick on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think beyond just any specific builds, we've definitely, like, learned a ton from Tyler as far as, like, that aspect and you know in building in the future we're going to be mimicking Nanon and stuff <laughs> um, but I think one of the things that was a highlight for the trampoline build is he had the information on the side and this goes back to the presentation and the photography bit and somebody commented I think you had like a three second was it a three second like average or something uh, the, yeah something like that I just that's awesome that's cool. well, it was, yeah, that was only because I was taking it in the almost the dark. I was trying to finish it one night, and uh, and the sun was going down, so I had very little ambient light. So I'm just I kept having to. I, I think I had actually tried to take it and do it the night before, and there was just not enough light. So yeah, just ratcheting up the uh, the aperture there. <laughs> Doing whatever it takes, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> So how about you, Tyler? Was there anything that stood out from Sean and Steph for you as, as they were posting their builds, one that really hit you as uh, pre pretty awesome? Well, I, th I think they already they already touched on it as the pogo stick guy, just because that's that's that that's that's me. That's my my style, my sense of humor. So that was that was like yes. Uh, even even though you know I, I wanted to do a pogo stick, I, it, nah, I can't I can't do a pogo stick now because that was that, that was perfect. So. The, the exaggerated features, the the presentation, everything was like, you know, that was that was awesome. That's the really that's my my sense of sense of or my they sense captured of humor, the guess, essence so of your building style really well. Yeah, exactly. So very cool, and the dragon's awesome too. But yeah, yeah. Fire. That that always makes something cooler. <laughs> exactly. You can't go wrong. Wait. So if I just light, if I build something and just light it on fire, <laughs> I would like win automatically, right? You might. It depends <sighs> on what it was and how big the fire is. 
fire. You'll get lots of haters. You yeah. definitely got some uh, angry messages for that mega block burning build. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take the good with the bad. <laughs> yeah. And how about you, Nanan? Anything that stood out for you from Sean and Steph? Yeah, so um, I really like the brain uh, creation that was framed up very nicely. So for me, I'm going into uh, neurology, so that's something that I you know, feel like, oh, I could, you know, if I came up with that, I could hang out like, on the office or, in, you know, in my room or whatever, that would be a great thing, but why didn't I come up with that myself? So I'm kind of jealous <laughs> that they came up with this idea. And another one that I want to mention is the uh, bang mask. I mean, it's such a perfect use of the part that, you know, I'm like, well, why didn't we think about that? It's, it's I not didn't a... think of it, I just didn't build it in time. Oh, really? Did you oh. put it on the spreadsheet? I, I didn't. Because okay. I, I was thinking, how am I going to photograph it? I'm not bald. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Who's the guy in the photo? One of our uh, friends we met through Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I guess it's good to know a bald guy in this case. Yeah. 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 Well, was... Sean was like, just let me shave my head, and I wouldn't let him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. You won't let it get any shorter than this. But yeah, we actually have another friend of ours named Tyler, and yeah. yeah, he just happens to have shaved head and and looks good with a shaved head, and you know, awfully not convenient. As buff as Bane is, but you know, he he's not like a, a skinny guy with a shaved head, so it worked out great. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was uh, definitely one of the more surprising ones when you posted that. <laughs> Able to get the bald guy and everything in there, and in the build looked looked really awesome as well. So that was that was an interesting one. <laughs> and now, so that was kind of some of your your favorites from each other. Uh, was there was there anything? I don't. I kind of asked this of some of you guys already. Uh, was there anything for you guys that was like the the what was the number one hardest build for you guys to do? Was there one that stands out to you as as the hardest build the you guys did during the competition? Nanan, if you want to start off on hardest build. Um... I don't know. They were all pretty straightforward. None of my creations were that gigantic. The ball was um, the rolling ball sculpture was pretty big. It took me um, a while to hook up the uh, escalator leading the ball up to the uh, top of the uh, tracks. But besides that, um, it was pretty easy hooking up the uh, tracks themselves. I can just cut the tubes to the uh, desired length. Everything else was pretty straightforward. Mm hmm. How about you, Tyler? Um, it was it was probably just the uh, the um, the big robot, just because I had tried it in the past and it had failed, so I didn't know if it was going to work this time. <laughs> that was the the comeback build for you. Exactly. So I'm I'm, I'm happy it worked. <laughs> although although the the night before I photographed it, I did have a a major collapse and the entire thing tipped over. Luckily, I was able to get everything back together, but. I was I was I was pretty mad for a few minutes. <laughs> I can imagine. Is there is there one build that stands out to you as uh, or I don't know you might you might keep all of them together, but is there one or two that you'll you'll keep together for longer than the rest just because you really like how it turned out? Yeah, I'm probably gonna keep uh, the uh, the Ignatius Bartholomew the thirty seventh or the Archduke of whatever. I'm probably gonna keep him together for a while, and the uh, I, I also like my my ray gun, so I'll probably I'll probably keep at least this one together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how about you guys, Sean and Steph? Was there a hardest build for you, and is is there one that uh, you stand out as one that you guys always want to keep together? Um, I think there's two builds that that were. One of the hardest, and I wouldn't say the hardest builds, because we didn't have any difficulty as far as we didn't have any builders block, but there were two builds that were very frustrating, mm -hmm. um, and that frustration mainly came in the taking the picture. So I think that, and sadly, <laughs> the most frustration 
is, is gained when you're expecting it to be such an easy task. Like, I just need to do this really quick. And it's going to be a cakewalk, man. No, man. Yeah, yeah, I just need to do this. They posted something. i got to respond really quick. And Bender was probably the most frustrating build to take a picture of. So because annoying. I had him propped up on the couch, and it didn't matter what I did. I probably took the picture, like, 150 times, because every time I'd push the button, he'd fall off the couch. He'd just be like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Or the cats would jump on the cat on the table and shake it just enough. And because he's, like, sitting and all of his arms are, like, crimped, and, you know, that's another technique we'd use to keep uh, hoses bent at certain angles. There's hot water, cold water, hot water, cold water. and But, you know, over time... You know, his arms are like this, do this, slowly do this, and same with his legs. So every time, the longer I take the take picture, he's just straightening out and sliding off. Oh, I was pretty mad at that one. <laughs> so Bender was a big pain to take a picture. And he's supposed to be this, like, tiny little build that we just put together really quick. Like, oh, he did. Great. We did a Bender. And then the, the wasps' nests were also a real pain um, because I had to... I needed natural lighting for it. I needed the sky in the background. We live in Oakland. There's lots of power lines. There's lots of buildings. There's, like, the sun you do catch is, like, blaring on the object. So I had to go to a friend's, like, pick up a friend while I was there. I had to hold the mock up against the sky while propping the trees up against something else and take a picture over here, and my arms weren't long enough, and the sun was blurring off of the facets, because, you know, we built the wooden post out of brown Lego, which shiny. is awfully shiny for giant beams of wood. <laughs> so, I, and, and I'm not, like, an Olympic, you know, swimming champion, so after my arm is up here for about 30 seconds, I'm done for the day. That was my workout. Uh, <laughs> so... And after this, for about half an hour, I was just like, my arms were rubber, my my patience had worn thin for the tenth time, if there was any patience left. But those were the two years. And they were supposed to be, like, easy. So, so there, there was a lot of physical sacrifice there as well to, to get good photos of the bill. <laughs> Blood, sweat, and tears. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, that's very cool. It's uh, it's been really awesome hearing about some of the the stories behind behind some of the builds here, and hearing kind of what you guys thought about each other's builds and some of the favorite builds that you guys did. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to talk with us tonight. It's been been really cool having you on. Yeah, been a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Mm-hmm. Thanks. And the the judging has not taken place yet, correct, Nana? Do you know when that will be? Uh, guys in charge of that. Okay, so you guys don't know. So just keep an eye on... What's the best place to keep an eye on for the results if people want to see who who comes out the victor in this? Guy will post the announcement in his photo stream, or you can just check the thread where we post the creations on Flickr. Okay, sounds good. So I'll make sure to put a link in the description then to to those uh, the, the thread and everything so you can keep an eye on that and see... See who comes out the winner. Uh, the, obviously, as we talked about tonight, a lot of really awesome builds. So uh, the judges have their hands full with with picking from those. Certainly, and, and thank you all for filling my photo stream and the photo stream of many others with beautiful, awesome builds for uh, four weeks. It was uh, it's just awesome to know that I I'm, I'm going to see something awesome. I it just it does make my day, and I, so I'm sure there are many other people out there like that. So really, really awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And I'd like, I'd like to remind everyone watching right now uh, about the Brick Builders Club at brickbuildersclub.com. Check them out to start receiving your monthly box of really cool Lego content, like custom stickers, pieces, and even Lego t-shirts. That's brickbuildersclub.com. I'll put a link to their website in the description of this video as well. So we appreciate everyone watching out there tonight. We'll see you next week.